Our scripture reading for today comes from the book of Nehemiah, chapter 2, verses 11 through 18. Listen for God speaking to you. So I came to Jerusalem, and there was for three days. Then I got up during the night, and I and a few men with me, and told no one that my God had put into my heart to do for Jerusalem. The only animal I took was the animal I rode. I went out by night by the valley gate past the dragon spring and to the dung gate, and I inspected the walls of Jerusalem that had been broken down and its gates that had been destroyed by fire. Then I went to the fountain gate and to the king's pool, but there was no place for the animal I was riding to continue. So I went up by way of the valley by night and inspected the wall. Then I turned back and entered by the valley gate and so returned. The officials did not know where I had gone or what I was doing. I had not yet told the Jews, the priests, the nobles, the officials, and the rest that were to do the work. Then I said to them, you see the trouble we are in, how Jerusalem lies in ruins and its gates burned. Come, let us rebuild the wall of Jerusalem so that we may no longer suffer disgrace. I told them that the hand of my God had been gracious upon me and also the words that the king had spoken to me. Then they said, let us start building. So they committed themselves to the common good. And our New Testament reading comes from the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 4, verses 12 through 14. For just as the body is one and has many members, and all the members of the body, though many, are one body, so it is with Christ. For in the Spirit we were all baptized into one body, Jews or Greeks, slaves or free, and we were all made to drink of one spirit. Indeed, the body does not consist of one member, but many. This is the word of the Lord. So this week, the World Series of Baseball begins, and the Tampa Bay Rays, uh, one of our Florida teams, is going to be facing off against the, either the L.A. Dodgers or the Atlanta Braves, uh, whomever wins tonight's Game 7. And it's always interesting when you see a team like the Tampa Bay Rays rise and make their way to the World Series, because baseball is a very interesting sport. Because in America, it's the only sport of the four major leagues that does not place a limit on how much a team can spend on its payroll. So many teams, if they have a lot of revenue, if they have good TV deals, if they are in populous areas, will employ a strategy of building super teams and spending as much money as they can to get the best players in order to make it deep into the playoffs. And often that strategy works. Um, the three of the four highest payrolls this year made it very far into the, the playoffs. The New York Yankees, they have a payroll of $110 million. That means they spent $110 million this season, just for the last few months, on their players. The Los Angeles Dodgers, the team that's playing to get into uh, the, the World Series today, spent $108 million. And the Astros spent $83 million. Those are the top three of the top four um, teams in the league and how much they spend on their roster. But the one team that has made it into the World Series now is the Tampa Bay Rays. And they spent $28 million on their roster. So while the Yankees rank one, the Dodgers rank two, and the Astros rank four in the league for how much they spent, The Tampa Bay ranked 28 out of 30. So how does a team like the Rays beat other teams like the Yankees and the Astros who spent two, three, even close to four times as much on their players? And in interviews, the players will say that uh, that it is the chemistry of these certain players coming together and everyone buying into the mission and everyone committing themselves to one another and the organization in order to win. And what we see is when a team can do that, they are able to accomplish something that no one thought they could accomplish. So I'm thinking about the Rays as we continue in this season of reopening our church, and we're all asking ourselves, what is coming next? And last week we looked at this question, who's leading us? And we saw how God equips 
us to lead the church and how there are some that God has called to lead. But today, we're going to see how God has a place for all of us in this season and how God has a place for all of us in the church. And like the rays, it takes the coming together of everyone committing to serve God and to serve one another for the church to be the best that it can be. Now, in the Nehemiah passage we read today, Israel had made its way back to Jerusalem after being in exile for so long. And Nehemiah was one of the leaders, and he walked around the city, and he saw that its gates and its walls were in complete disrepair. And he, he realized that before they could do anything inside the city, they needed to do what they needed to in order to protect the city. And so it's this point that he begins to say, who can rebuild the walls? Nehemiah didn't have vendors or contractors or experts to call, but rather Nehemiah had to call everyone from the, the people of Israel, and everyone came together, different skills, different talents, different age, different places in stature. God called everyone to come together to build the walls of Jerusalem and, and when everyone came together, they were able to build the walls. It wasn't just the priests. It wasn't just the leaders. It was everyone whom God called to rebuild Jerusalem and to bring it back to what it used to be like. And I can't help but think about where we are today as we are slowly rebuilding life. We are slowly rebuilding our church here after going so long without meeting in person and I'm sure all of us are thinking, what does God have in store for me? And let me guarantee you, God has a place for all of us as we rebuild this church. Now, even before the pandemic, there were always three very general levels of participation that I think we could see here at church. And I want to go through those really quickly. The, the first level would be the consumer level. That's someone who comes to church and consumes. They hear, they listen to, to the sermon, they come to the worship service, and then they leave. Um, and people who consume are people who look to church to build up their own lives only. That's the first level of participation. The second is, is those who engage in the life of the church, and that's people who come, they consume, they listen to the, the sermon, they listen to the music, but then they take it a step further. Maybe they participate in an event. Maybe they join a small group. Maybe they begin to strike up a conversation with someone else in the church and develop a relationship. And what we see is they start to engage in the life of the church. And they see their faith not only as something that, uh, is, is something that they consume, but also something that they engage with. And then finally, there are those who have been called to lead the church. And that's the deepest level of participation. And those are the people uh, who, who give of themselves for the sake of the church, volunteering their time and expertise to help the life of the church and help us be the best that we can be. Leaders, musicians, um, all sorts of people who commit to pray and to give of themselves. Perhaps it's organizing an event. Perhaps it's joining a committee, and at our church, we call elders and deacons to lead our church. And every single one of these levels is an okay place to be if that's where God is calling you. If, you are, if we are at a, a point in life where we just need to consume, that's okay. Sometimes we are, are wounded. Sometimes we are so burdened with life's challenges that we need this place to be a, a, a spot where we can come and heal and be fed and be nourished. Sometimes we are new to the church and we're trying to figure out where can I fit in. Sometimes it's good to engage, to, to give back, to make it a part of our lives. And then there are moments where we lead now, all of these places are good, and I think all of us go through seasons where we are on one level or the other, but one thing that we see is that we're never called to be static. We're never called to just stay at the consumer level, and we're never called to just stay at the engaged level. And, and hear this, we're never called to permanently be in roles of leadership here as well. These are all seasons, 
And we trust that as God is calling us into one season, out of one season, that God is simultaneously calling others. And that's what we see is like the Israelites. Everyone was called to build the wall. Everyone had a role to play. We here as, as people of God believe that God has a place for all of us to be the people of Christ. Not just here at First Presbyterian Church of DeQuesta, but as the, the Christian church in general. In 1 Corinthians, Paul describes the body of Christ as members of the body. And if you look at the whole passage, he goes into detail. What if the whole body were just an eye? Well, then how could you walk? What if the whole body was a foot or a hand? Well, how could you see where you're going? How could you hear what is happening around you? And what Paul teaches us is that the church, we can only be the church when all of us come together, our various gifts and talents and personalities and quirks and strengths. We all come together. We support one another, but then we come together to build and rebuild and to go forward as a church. Just like the people of Jerusalem, there isn't anyone else. God calls all of us to come together. It's not just for the pastors and leaders, but it's for all of us to come together, to be God's church, to find a way to engage and lead where we can. Now, you might be thinking, Pastor Dan, how can you be talking about engaging and being involved in church when we are in a pandemic? And many of us, especially our brothers and sisters who are worshiping virtually, don't feel safe going outside of their home. Yes, we do live in a challenging time right now. And the way that we can become involved and participate in the life of the church is going to be more unorthodox than it has ever been. But I promise you that there are ways for all of us, no matter what our life circumstance is, to engage, to become involved, and to join our journey. And our session has been talking about this a lot as we enter into this season where we know that <clears throat> things might not be the same for another year or so. But in that time, we have committed to provide opportunities to engage, to be involved, to be like the people of Israel who banded together for the sake of their city. And so I want to list just a few quick ways that all of us can engage with the life of the church, engage in our faith, and help rebuild this church. The first, and this is the most important, is to pray for us and to pray for this church. We will not get anywhere without prayer. And then the second is find ways to participate, and sometimes that means in person. I was so heartened this week. Uh, our nursery worker was sick unexpectedly, and she couldn't make it to a Wednesday night to watch our kids while we had Bible study, and, uh, and Crystal had to uh, call a member, and it was a member who came and watched our kids and provided this time and space for a bunch of us parents to get together and explore God's word together. And it was only because someone had decided to step up and step in. Join a small group. We are still going to be having small groups, times to get connected with others. There will be moments to learn more about God's word. There will be moments to join together in fellowship. And there's going to be moments for us to worship together, whether it's in person, in the parking lot, at home, there are ways for all of us to engage, to make this a part of our lives. There are going to be ways to help us in our mission work. We're talking about doing our trunk or treat event that's coming up on November 1st and how that's going to be our food drive, one of the ways we help feed the hungry this fall. And we're going to be doing Operation Christmas Child, providing children blessings who were only expecting disappointment this Christmas. And in all of that, all of us are called to continue to support us financially. Giving and worshiping with our finances is often the most intimate way that we worship, but God calls all of us to come together. There are so many ways for us to engage, to step up, and to step in and when we do, we will be amazed at what God can do through us. So as we prepare for the World Series that's coming up, it always brings me back to uh, one of my favorite movies, Field of Dreams, that I think is about 30 years old. Um, 
but it's one of my favorite, and it's about uh, this man who starts hearing this voice telling him to build this baseball field. And what we hear throughout the, the film, he lives in the middle of Iowa, uh, but this voice was saying, if you build it, people will come. If you build it, people will come. And by the end of the movie, he builds this baseball field, and it brings people from all over who are looking for a place to connect. Family, if we build it, if we give our time and our talents and our efforts, if we give our hearts not just to God but to one another, we will be able to have God help us create this space where people can come and worship and find a way to get through this really challenging year. But it will only happen if all of us find a way to come together and to participate and for that, that's one of the most exciting things that I am waiting to see this year and to watch it unfold as it has been ever since this pandemic started. So next week, we are going to conclude our series and we're going to see what is Jesus saying to us through all of this. But this week, I would like to challenge all of us to reflect, what is our level of participation in our faith and church is God calling us to engage? Is God calling us to lead? Is God calling us to slow down and simply consume for a little bit? Wherever we are, we worship a God who meets us at our place in the journey and continues to walk with us. And so may we be a people who follow Christ first until he comes again. Amen.